Well, good morning. It is great to uh, have everybody here on this gorgeous uh, Sunday morning. Um, and, and you came out while it was still, um, although we've had, got air conditioning in here, so um, you don't have to worry about that. And the good news is, thanks to um, uh, our council and, and specifically uh, Mark Swartz, uh, whenever you hear the uh, air conditioning going, not only do you know that you're being cooled off, but you can know that the, um, the air is being cleaned. So um, that is an added bonus. I, I think it's gonna reach 90 today. Is that what I saw? So um, good day to uh, to be inside, um, unless you just really love that. Um, I did when I was 20 years younger and um, well, you know, <laughs> happens to all of us. Um, I wanna welcome those who are at home as well. And um, we have a wonderful service. Today isn't just any service. Um, many of you uh, got the memo, which is awesome. Today is Pentecost, sometimes known as the birthday of the church, because today is the day that the Holy Spirit was given to, um, to the people, uh, to all of Jesus' followers. So um, that's what we celebrate today, and uh, we're going to start out with some music, and then I've got a very special announcement uh, when, we, uh, when we get done. So um, stay tuned. Dick, take it away.
don't know that I've ever done that before. I completely left my sermon in my office. All of a sudden, I'm looking up on the, on the pulpit, and I'm like, something's missing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, well, we do want to start out uh, with a reminder that next Sunday is going to be our graduation Sunday. And we have two very special graduates that we are going to be celebrating, one of whom is here with us today. Corey Doster is going to be graduating from kindergarten uh, and heading into first grade. So we are going to be celebrating him. No? He'll be in kindergarten. He's, he's graduating from preschool. Got it, got it, got it. OK. Um, and uh, Parker Smith is graduating from high school. Uh, so we will be honoring um, Corey and Parker. We hope that we're honoring Parker. Uh, the only reason that we wouldn't be is if it rains on Saturday when Bellevue High School is supposed to have their graduation and they end up doing it on Sunday. So um, we will see. We do want to celebrate uh, birthdays within our church. Today is Krista Manbeck's birthday. So happy birthday to Krista. And tomorrow is Connor Yingling's birthday. And I know he has brought a lot of joy to uh, that family. Tuesday, Natalie Hartzell celebrates her birthday. And Wednesday, both Linda Agler and Nancy Yingling celebrate their birthdays. Finally, on Friday, David Robertson celebrates his birthday, as does Monica Carberry. So happy birthday to, um, to one and all. All right, now to the important announcement. Um, on Tuesday, your church council gathered for a special meeting to discuss um, the new CDC recommendations and state and, and everything else that's going on. And I have to tell you, I could not be prouder um, to be associated with this church and this church council. It was a thoughtful, prayer-filled um, discussion that took into account not only what we as individuals might want to do, um, but also recognizing that we are a family of faith and seeking to uh, recognize what the needs of all of our church family are, not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually as well. And so what we are going to do is um, we are going to have a uh, kind of a slow reintegration into what you might consider normal. Uh, beginning today, uh, for any in the congregation who are fully vaccinated and who are comfortable doing so, you may remove your masks once you're seated in the congregation. We're going to follow kind of the same model that restaurants have been using for quite some time. When you're up and moving around, when you're entering, when you're exiting, when you're interacting with folks, we're going to ask that you continue to keep your masks on whether you are vaccinated or not. Um, if once, however, you are seated in your, in your pews, because we do have the iWave system that is continually cleaning the air, um, and um, we can feel confident in the, uh, the new guidance that people who are, in fact, fully vaccinated cannot spread the virus as well as not receive it, um, we are going to begin with that step. Again, um, Please, if you are most comfortable keeping it on, by all means, keep it on. Uh, but if you would like to remove your masks once you're seated, you may do so. And then, over the course of the summer, each month, we are going to resume certain practices and procedures. So I had to tell, Diane Seal and Fran Morgan have been so faithful throughout this whole pandemic. They have come in faithfully every Thursday morning and set those bulletins out in the pews that you find and also the communion elements that you find on, um, on communion Sundays. I had to come in on Thursday and give them their 30 days notice. <laughs> because um, beginning uh, in, in July, we'll start passing out bulletins uh, in person. Uh, beginning in June, um, we will um, have the ushers pass the plates down the open pews. So we will get rid of those boxes. Well, actually, we'll probably leave the boxes out there just for a short period of time, but we'll have the ushers coming down. And our hope is that by slowly reintegrating some of these things, it will help everyone, um, those who are eager 
to jump back into everything and those who might be still a little hesitant. Try and help everyone to feel comfortable because ultimately as a church family, that's what we want to do. And as Mark uh, rightly reminded all of us, our values here at the church include not only family, but also compassion, respect, and love. And so uh, we hope that this decision has been made with the utmost of love, compassion, and respect for all members of our church family. Uh, if there are any concerns, please, by all means, I am available if you would like to speak as are the other members of the church council, but I would like to thank them and for their selfless efforts to put the needs of others ahead of possibly their own uh, wants and desires. So I am going to, for the first time, take that off. Somehow I think it's going to be a little easier to preach this way. Um, and, uh, and my mic won't be muffled, which I understand that it was last week. So let us now uh, begin with prayer to God, uh, thanking God for all that we have and all that God has done for us. God, we do thank you. We have so many blessings. We, if we attempted to count them, they would literally be as numerous as the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the seashore. It would be impossible to know all that you have done for us, and yet our lack of awareness doesn't stop you from blessing us each and every day. We thank you for this, God. We thank you for the many ways that you have supported each and every one of us individually and us as a church, your church here in Bellevue. Thank you for the leadership of this church in being mindful of their role to care for your flock, your people, and most particularly the least of these, those who are not able to feel as safe as others might. We pray, God, that in all ways we might be a family and reflect your love toward all those who come in here and those who join us from at home. In all ways, God, we pray your presence with us and your reminder of your presence with us so that we might be empowered and inspired to do all that you call us to be. And we pray this in the name of your son, our savior, Jesus. Amen. Corey, you're it. Come on down. You're the next contestant on It's the Children's Sermon. How about that? Good, good? All right. Now, these are familiar, right? Yeah, Ryan's gonna be really jealous when he finds out he wasn't here today for this. So I got a question for you. What color do you like best? Uh, brown, red, purple, orange? Purple, all right. Which one is better? This one? Oh, the big one. I didn't even have to um, offer them. Why is, why is this one better? It's bigger, right? We all want bigger. We all want more. That's, that's more exciting, isn't it? This one's going to last longer. There's more candy in here. Um, I'm not really sure, but I'm kind of betting there's more Tootsie Roll in here. So if I gave you your choice, which one would you pick? The big one. Yeah, we all would, right? What if I told you that God gives us that same choice? Not necessarily with Tootsie Roll Pops, but with life. But sometimes people are so sure of what they want, they choose the little one. I know. He, he just kind of furrowed his, his eyes. I know. So we always have to remember that God loves us so much that God always wants to give us the bigger and better. But we have to trust God because sometimes what God gives us doesn't exactly come in the timing, like when we think it ought to or how we think it ought to. But God always wants to bless us. Do you know why? Because God loves us. And when you love somebody, you always want them to have the biggest and the best, right? So, you get the big one. I told you Ryan was gonna be jealous. <laughs> Let's pray. 
I should have said that. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for loving us so much that you always want us to have the biggest and the best of everything. Thank you for giving us the biggest and the best, even when sometimes we don't recognize it. I pray that you would bless Corey and all of our young people here at the church, that they would recognize your hand in all of the blessings they receive day in and day out. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Our first scripture comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers they were completely amazed how can this be they exclaimed these people are from galilee and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages here we are Parthians, medes elamites people from mesopotamia judea cappadocia pontus the province of Asia, Figria, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. May God add his blessing to this holy word. Join me in congratulating Ben. This is the scripture nobody ever wants. Good job, Ben. Couldn't, literally could not have done it better myself. Although here's a tip, if you're ever reading scripture like that, you've got all of those words. Here's the tip that I always give everybody. Nobody else knows how to pronounce these things either. So just do it with confidence. Act like, yeah, that's how you pronounce that. All right. Um, I have the continuation of our Pentecost story, also from the second chapter of Acts, beginning in verse 14. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what we, have see, what we see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the, Lord's, of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God, we do give you thanks. In fact, our gratitude overflows from our hearts when we take even a moment to think about all that you have done for us. We pray, God, as we seek your word today, 
seek inspiration, direction, empowerment, comfort, whatever it is that our hearts are looking for. God, we know that we find it in you. And so we pray that you would guide us to see the message that you have for each and every one of us in this morning's holy word. Remind us that this is your word speaking to us. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, with the exception of the 90 degree temperatures, are you all excited, as excited about summer being here as I am? I mean, I think, I think at this point, I don't care what the calendar says, we have skipped over spring. We are definitely into summer, and I, for one, am elated. In fact, I've actually been noticing that um, it seems a little strange. I feel like I am a little more excited than I've been in the past. And at first, I wasn't sure what that was about. Uh, I mean, I've got my garden in, that's always a summer thing, I, but I did that last year. And I'm looking forward to some vacation days and I, oh right, I didn't do that last year. And I think that's what it is. I, I kind of feel like I missed last summer. Last summer was not a summer. You see, in the church, uh, clergy and office staff and, and, and staff in general, we look forward to the summer because the bulk of the church year, all of those activities that we do, not that there's nothing over the summer, obviously we continue to meet on Sunday mornings and hopefully we have a few things sprinkled in, but by and large, the summer is a time when we can kind of catch our breath. We don't have Advent coming down the pike or needing to plan for a uh, Lent or Easter or special Sundays other than some baptisms. And um, I'm happy to say I've got a wedding or two lined up for the rest of this year. But by and large, we do get a little bit of time to catch our breath from the rest of the church here and also catch up on projects like updating the website and uh, updating the library area. Some of those things that we just don't have time for when we're going at that breakneck pace throughout the rest of the year. Last summer, however, um, really wasn't any of that, N not even remotely. In fact, I would dare say that, that we were busier here in the church last summer than, than we are like during Advent or, or some Lenten Sundays. Um, and of course, we all know why we were trying to deal with everything that was happening. Um, and in a sense, we still are, but at least it's more of a known entity. So for the first time in two years now, I'm looking forward to this summer time. So I think I'm so excited because I have deferred. It's two years worth of excitement all lumped together. And trust me, I have plans. I wasn't sure what would be available, so I went ahead and I probably shouldn't admit this since I grew up in this area and have now been at this church for almost 11 years. But I just bought last year, I bought my first ever gold pass to Cedar Point. So I am looking forward to reviving some of those childhood memories. Uh, I'm not sure how many of those roller coasters I can actually tackle without needing a neck brace, but um, I am planning to have some fun. And I know that Dick is there all the time. So maybe we'll meet up and have some Berardi's fries or something like that. I'm also hoping to make it to a baseball game or two. Um, won't be making it out to New York, unfortunately, but um, the Mud Hens are playing and the Crushers have their game and that's nice and close. So if anybody's interested in a baseball game, uh, let me know. And honestly, if anybody's playing Little League Baseball, I'm so starved to see live baseball in person. I will go to anything. I'm, I'd almost be ready to go to an arcade game where you're playing the, uh, the baseball on the pinball machine. Um, looking forward to taking care of my garden and, and everything else. And then of course, I've already mentioned that the heat doesn't, doesn't do well with me anymore. So I've even got a plan for my indoor activities. I'm gonna catch up on all my Marvel superhero movies. Because as some of you know, that is my favorite thing. As far as I'm concerned, there is no better escape from reality than watching one of those Marvel superhero movies. And I don't even care which one it is. I have some favorites, Aquaman, but um, I don't really even care. It's just this escape where I get sucked into the story and by the end of it, I almost feel like I was a part of it. In fact, usually by the end of it, I, I sort of have these ideas about, wow, maybe I could be a superhero. That would be great. Have you ever done that or? Is it just me? <laughs> we have 
talked before in here about what it would be like to be a superhero or at least to have a superpower. And I've asked you before, if you recall, what superpower you might want to have, you know, like x-ray vision or shooting lasers out of your eyes or super strength or super speed. For me, I think I'd choose being able to fly because I don't know, that just kind of seems cool. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, that's just not going to happen. The best thing that we can do is to tune into Disney Plus or Amazon Prime or Netflix or wherever else you get your, um, your superhero movies because we just can't have a superpower. We're just mere humans, except we're not, except we do have a superpower. In fact, from a spiritual perspective, we have the greatest superpower that has ever been given to anyone. I mean, forget the x-ray vision, forget the laser eyes, forget the super strength, even forget being able to fly. We have something available to each and every one of us. In fact, I'll bet most of you have received this superpower, whether you know it or not. Now, it's on you whether or not you're using it. I mean, imagine being able to fly and walking all over the place. I'd never do that. And yet many people have received the greatest superpower ever and they're not doing anything with it. In fact, some of them aren't even aware that they have it. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep you in suspense anymore because you're wondering what well, superpower, what is the superpower? Today's Pentecost. Today is the day we received as followers of Jesus and not just the disciples and followers in the upper room. We, all of us, everyone who professes Jesus as savior, we received on this day so many years ago, even before we were born, the power of the Holy Spirit. That was what enabled them to do everything that you heard Ben read about. Everybody hearing the gospel, the good news about Jesus in their own languages. It's what enabled them, if you continue to read on through Acts, to establish the church, to make it through all of the persecution that they did. Remember when before he died, Jesus said that what he had done his disciples could do also, and much more. They probably wondered about that at the time. How could that be possible? We're just mere human beings. And yet it's possible through the same superpower that Jesus himself had. Remember when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River? He went in as a mere mortal, just like any of us. Oh, son of God, to be sure. But the Bible tells us that Jesus had given up his spiritual powers. So he went into the waters of the Jordan, just like any of us might, just as some of us have. But when he was there, God sent the Holy Spirit. He came down in the form of a dove, which is what we have described. But the truth is, the most important thing is that God sent the Holy Spirit to inspire Jesus, to remind him of his mission, to empower him to do everything that he did. All that Jesus did throughout his life and ministry, the, the miracles, the healings, even raising people from the dead, all of it was done through the superpower of the Holy Spirit. So the question is then, what is the Holy Spirit? Is anybody thinking that? The Holy Spirit admittedly is probably one of the most difficult things to understand in, in all of the church. When we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, as we frequently do, I can always stand up here and see a lot of heads nodding, but at the same time, I can see a little confusion in people's eyes. You know, like, all right, yep, I know that's part of the teaching of the church. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pretend that I know what I'm talking about so that uh, nobody thinks I don't. Here's the thing, the Holy Spirit is really very simple. Spirit is God's spirit. God is holy. So the Holy Spirit is nothing more than God's spirit. The same spirit that enabled God to create all that we now know as the world. The spirit that came to Jesus, as I told you in the Jordan, and enabled him to do all that he did. This is the spirit that was shared with Jesus' followers and disciples and all of us too, on that first day of Pentecost. This is the spirit that is available to us as we profess Jesus and follow him as Christians. 
This is the spirit that can make all things possible, not just for God, but through us from God. And here's the greatest thing about the spirit. It's not just uh, something that is with us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. That's a little bit different. Batman has a utility belt. He puts it on, but if he takes it off, he's not much of a superhero, is he? I mean, I'm sure he's strong. He probably works out down in the bat cave or something like that. But the truth is you catch just Bruce Wayne out on the street and you mug him and you've got a decent chance if you've got a gun of winning the day. That's probably not a good example considering how Bruce lost his parents, but. Um, and Superman, all right, he's, he's great. He's got all of these powers, but they come from the yellow sun. So if he's back on his own home planet or if you have kryptonite around that you can nullify those powers with, he's not much good anymore to you. And on and on and on. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, God's spirit dwelling within us, this spirit, because it comes from God, can't be nullified. It, it can't be uh, taken off because it is literally within us. God's spirit partnering with our spirit, coming alongside of us and empowering us to do whatever it is that God calls us to do. We are all called to something. Like the original disciples and followers, we are called to continue Jesus' mission in our world. His mission of sharing the good news of God's love that leads to salvation and grace for all people. Jesus wants everyone to know this. That's why the disciples were given the ability to share this wonderful life-giving message with everyone who was there in their own language. And I can tell you, having been on mission trips, how important it is for people to hear the message of God's love for them in their own language. It's powerful. It resonates in our hearts. And that's what God wants us to be able to do. Now, we're each called in different ways. We have the same mission, but different ways to accomplish it. I can't necessarily tell you what your way is, what you're called to. What I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt is that you have the superpower to be able to do it. You have the power of the Holy Spirit living within you. And if you tap into that power, you are gonna be able to do more than Batman, Superman, and even Aquaman combined. We just need to tap into it. Now, just in case you're still a little bit confused about Holy Spirit, I want to tell you what the word spirit means in both of the original languages that it was written in in the Bible. Because you see, this understanding brings with it a new level of awareness of exactly what power this spiritual, this spiritual superpower really is, exactly what we have been given and what's possible through it. You see, in the Hebrew, the word in the Old Testament used for spirit is ruach. In the New Testament, in the Greek, the word is pneuma. They both can be translated in basically the same way, breath. Spirit can also be translated as breath. Holy Spirit, God's spirit, or God's breath is what the Holy Spirit is. Now, that's powerful when you start to think about what breath is. Does anybody know any living being who doesn't have breath and is still a living being? It's not possible. You don't need a medical degree to understand that simple formula. No breath, no life. God's breath, God's Holy Spirit is the life-giving and creative force that is given to each and every one of us. Life-giving, creative. That's what this superpower is all about. The same power that moved across the waters of the deep in Genesis. You can look it up, that's exactly what it says. That power is what dwells inside of all of Jesus's followers, whether you're tapping into it or not, it's there. Just imagine being in the sanctuary and sitting here in the dark because the windows uh, take out too much of the light. No, of course not. We turn the lights on because we've got the power. Today's scripture, is about learning to turn the lights on. That's what 
this scripture and this celebration today is all about. It's about understanding that we have the superpower and learning that all we need to do is tap into it, turn it on, trust God's guidance, and then lean in to the life-giving creative force that dwells within us. It's not just in some. It's not just in those who wear robes and stoles. It's not just in those who have leadership positions in the church. Again, if you profess Jesus as your savior, if you consider yourself to be a Christian and a follower of Christ, then you have this superpower and it's available to you all the time, anytime. Now, it's not for parlor tricks. This doesn't mean that you can go out to Bassett's and suddenly lift up an entire rack of whatever. But it does mean that you can do, every single one of you can do whatever it is God's calling you to. It might seem impossible to you, and the truth is, no offense, it is. But nothing is impossible with God. And because the Holy Spirit is God's spirit, God's breath dwelling with us, then that means that nothing is impossible for us with God's Holy Spirit. So if we are called, then we are empowered. We will be inspired and enabled to do all that we can, just as Jesus was. We truly can do what Jesus did and much more, according to God's call on our lives. But again, each and every one of the superheroes that I'll be watching in the movies had a choice at one point. Bruce Wayne decided that he wanted to be Batman, wanted to avenge his parents' death and make the world a safer place. Superman decided that he would use his superpowers, not necessarily for his own gain, but to help other people. And on and on and on. They all have different stories, but the, the core of it is the same using what you have for the benefit of others. And that's what the Holy Spirit, that's what today is all about. We all have this superpower. We just need to tap into it and turn it on and then trust God to guide us and show us the ways that we can use it for the benefit of our world. So enjoy your superpower and don't worry about the utility belt. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, uh, we definitely want to keep in our thoughts and prayers all who might be struggling. I don't have any specific names, but we always know that there is someone who has recently received 
a diagnosis or test results didn't come out the way they had hoped or they're in need of something. Through it all, as we think of ourselves as a family of faith, not simply here at St. Paul's, but worldwide, we always are thinking in love for one another. That is what it is to be Christ-like. And that is the attitude that we bring with us to prayer. So let us pray. God, we do thank you for all of the ways that you enable us to be like our Savior Jesus. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit given so many years before any of us were born and yet empowering us still today. Thank you that you have entrusted with us this great mission that Jesus began in our world and that we are now asked to continue in his absence. We know, God, that we have all that we need. Forgive us for the times that we doubt and when we think that we have to do everything on our own power. Remind us of this tremendous power, this superpower that you have given to each and every one of us, your indwelling spirit, the same spirit present at creation that enabled Jesus to do what he did is also with us. Show us, God, the ways, lead us and inspire us to see the call that you have placed before us. Because as each one of us do our little part within the call, then all of us together bring about the kingdom that Jesus preached about. We bring about that kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And truly, that is the day when we all, the whole world, will rejoice. As we continue in this world, God, we pray for those who are in need of your touch this day. We had a wonderful celebration on Wednesday for your beloved daughter, Rosemary, and we thank you once again for her role and the ways that she's touched each of our lives. We pray now that you would touch her family as they grieve her loss and continue on without her. We give you thanks that Rosemary is reunited with Bob, but we ask that you would fill our hearts with the memories and love that she shared with us as we continue on in this world. We pray God for those who are having a difficult time whether it is a physical struggle, an emotional, a mental, a social, or a spiritual difficulty that they've been facing, whether they received a difficult diagnosis, whether they're awaiting tests that have them a bit anxious, whether there's a procedure looming in the future, or any other challenge, God, that is laid before any of us, we pray that you would reach out to us and meet us at the point of our needs as only you can. And God, because we now know that we are equipped with the superpower, we offer ourselves to you. Use us to also be your hands and your feet, and most importantly, your heart in our world. Show us how we can be shepherds with Christ of your flock, how we can care for the least of these and those that we, we know and care about, and even those that we do not know and may never meet. In all ways, God, you call us to be a family, your family, not chosen because we look alike or even have the same experiences, attitudes, opinions, or backgrounds, but because we all love you and you have created each and every one of us. Thank you, God, for the awesome privilege that it is to be part of this family and help us to recognize all of those who are in this family with us. Because truly that is what Jesus taught us, always speaking of the group, never simply of the individual. In fact, teaching us to pray in the plural, praying for one another as we join our voices now in this special prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Enjoy your day. Remember your superpower. And as we leave this place, may the love of God that has made all things possible 
yesterday, today, and tomorrow be with you. May the example of Christ inspire you and lead you forward. And may you be cognizant of this power, the superpower of the Holy Spirit, which comes to all of us on this day of Pentecost and on every day. Let's turn it on and change the world. Amen. Thank you.